Hello students, today we will be studying the histology of nervous tissue part 1. Nervous tissue is a specialized tissue that shows property of irritability and conducting. It can receive information about the external and internal environment and transmit it to another tissue. Let us see how we classify the nervous system based on the anatomical features. This is done as the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is further subdivided into brain and spinal cord while the peripheral nervous system is divided into the peripheral nerves and the ganglia. The ganglia further being divided into sensory ganglia and autonomic ganglia. We can also classify the nervous system based on the functional basis into somatic nervous system which is under voluntary control and autonomic nervous system which is involuntary and autonomic nervous system further subdivided into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. As I said the somatic nervous system is under conscious control whereas the autonomic nervous system works involuntarily. The autonomic nervous system controls the smooth muscles, the cardiac muscles and the glandular epithelium for letting down the secretions of the glands. Let us see the constituents of the nervous tissue. It contains two components, the neurons and the neuroglia. Neuron. It is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system. It has a cell body or a soma and processes which are axon and dendrites. While the neuroglial cells are the supportive cells, they are not involved in the nerve conduction. And these are appendinal cells, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes and microglia which are seen in the central nervous system and Schwann cells and satellite cells that are seen in the peripheral nervous system. Let us study the neuron in detail. The human nervous system has more than 10 billion neurons and they are grouped as sensory neurons which carry information towards the nervous system, motor neurons which carry information away from the nervous system and interneurons which communicate information from sensory to motor neurons. Let us see the structure of the neuron. The neuron has a cell body, the processes which are axon and dendrites and the synaptic junctions. The body also called as the perikaryon or the soma consists of nucleus, perinuclear cytoplasm and the cell membrane. The cytoplasm contains large vesicular nucleus, numerous mitochondria, rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex and missile bodies. Now this is a picture showing us the structure of the neuron where we can see that this is the cell body or the soma and these are the processes. The single axon and could be multiple dendrites. A magnified view of the soma shows us that it contains a vesicular nucleus, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, lysosome and mesial bodies and this here is the axon hillock. Also seen here are some part of the axon and also some parts of the dendrites. The mesial bodies are granular basophilic cytoplasmic material, they are stacks of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Neuron contains many neurofibrils, microtubules and microfilaments. Centrioles are present and they help in production of the neurofibrils. Neurites are processes arising from the cell body of the neuron and they are of two types, axons and dendrites. Dendrites these are multiple, short, thick, tapering processes 
Nissal granules extend into the dendrites. Branching pattern of dendrites known as arborization is also called as the dendritic trees. Dendrites receive information and carry it towards the cell body. Axon is a single long and thin process of the neuron. It has a uniform diameter, carries information away from the cell body. It is devoid of missile granules. Cytoplasm here is called as the axoplasm and the cell membrane is called as the axolemma. Axon hillock is a part of the nerve cell body devoid of missile granules and gives rise to the axon. Let us see the differences between the axon and the dendrite. The axon is a single long thin process of the neuron while dendrite are multiple short thick processes of the neuron. Axon has uniform diameter while dendrites taper towards the end that is away from the neuron. The axon rarely branches while dendrites branch to form the dendritic tree. The axons do not contain mesial granules while dendrites contain mesial granules. Axon carries the signal away from the nerve cell body while dendrites carry signals towards the nerve cell body. Let us now see the classification of neurons. The neurons can be classified based on the number of processes into four types unipolar, pseudo unipolar, bipolar, and multipolar. Unipolar neurons have only one cell process, and that's the dendrite. An example being the neurons of the mesenchymic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Pseudo unipolar neurons have only one process, that's the axon which then divides into two branches, peripheral and central. Example, dorsal root ganglia and sensory nerve ganglia. Bipolar neurons have two processes, one axon and one dendrite. Examples seen in the retina, ganglionic cells of vestibular and spiral ganglia that is seen in the 8th cranial nerve. Multipolar neurons have multiple processes of which one is an axon and the others are the numerous dendrites. Examples being the stellate cells, Purkinje cells, pyramidal cells seen in spinal cord, cerebellum and cerebrum as motor neurons and interneurons. This picture shows us the four types of neurons. This is a unipolar neuron having a single process which is the axon. This is pseudo unipolar neuron single process which then divides into two processes peripheral and central bipolar neuron having one axon and one dendrite and a multipolar neuron having a single axon and multiple dendrites neurons can also be classified based on the length of the axon into two types golgi type 1 which have long axons examples being the pyramidal cells of the motor cortex in cerebrum and Golgi type 2 cell neurons which have short axons, examples being the neurons of the cerebral and cerebellar cortex. Neurons can also be classified based on their function and that's the physiological classification into sensory neuron which receives impulses and carries the signals to the nervous system and motor neurons which carry impulses from the nervous system towards the muscles and glands. Now we go on to see the neuroglial cells. These are the supporting cells of the nervous system. They are grouped as central neuroglia and peripheral neuroglia. The central neuroglia, these are neuroglia of the central nervous system. Peripheral neuroglia are neuroglia seen in the peripheral nervous system. The central neuroglia are of four types. Astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, microglia and ependymal cells. Astrocytes, these are the largest neuroglial cells, star-shaped, having numerous processes, further classified into two types, fibrous and protoplasmic. Fibrous astrocytes have fewer and thinner processes and they are seen in the white matter of the CNS. 
while protoplasmic astrocytes have numerous short, thick, branching cytoplasmic processes and these are seen in the grey matter. This picture shows us the two types of astrocytes. This here is the fibrous astrocyte and this here is the protoplasmic astrocyte. The functions of the astrocytes are that they provide physical support to the neurons. They remove the neurotransmitters from the synapses and maintain a favorable metabolic environment for the neurons. They help in maintaining the blood-brain barrier and they also store glycogen. Oligodendrocytes. These are small rounded cells with few cytoplasmic processes. They produce the myelin sheet in the central nervous system. One oligodendrocyte myelinates many adjacent axons or the same axon at different places. The gap between adjacent processes of the oligodendrocytes that myelinate an axon is what is called as the node of Granvier. The function of the oligodendrocyte is that they produce the myelin sheet in the CNS. This picture shows us the oligodendrocyte with its cell processes which are forming the myelin sheet around the axon. And here we see a single axon being having the oligodendrocytes which will curl around to form the myelin sheet. Microglia. These are small neuroglial cells derived from mesoderm that is the bone marrow. They are involved in phagocytosis, small cells with elongated nuclei and few cytoplasmic processes. And the function as we said these are phagocytic cells. This picture shows us the microglia cell, a small cell elongated nucleus with some cell processes. Appendinal cells. These are cuboidal or columnar in shape and arranged in a single layer. The cavities of the nervous system, that is the ventricles, are lined by the epithelium-like appendinal cells. And these are derived from the neural tube. Let us see the function of the appendinal cells. Exchange of substances between brain and the cerebrospinal fluid at the brain CSF barrier. The choroid plexus secretes the CSF. This is a picture which shows us the structure of the ependinal cells. We then go on to see the peripheral neuroglia. These are supporting cells of the peripheral nervous system. Two types, Schwann cells and satellite cells. Schwann cells, also called as neurolemocytes. These are flattened cells with flattened nucleus surrounded by abundant cytoplasm. They are derived from the neural crest cells. And the function is that they produce the myelin sheet in the peripheral nervous system. This picture shows us the neural crest cells and how they give rise to formation of the Schwann cells. And what we see here is how the Schwann cell is going to form the myelin sheet. And what we see here are the non-myelinating Schwann cells. Satellite cells. In ganglia, which is nothing but collection of nerve cell bodies outside the central nervous system. The neuronal bodies are surrounded by a layer of flat cuboidal cells which are called as the satellite cells. The satellite cell capsule gives passage to the nerve cell processes. In the sensory ganglia, the satellite cell capsule is nearly complete as the sensory neurons do not synapse in the ganglia. Whereas, in the autonomic ganglia, the satellite cell capsule is not complete as the autonomic the neurons have synapse in the ganglia. And the function of the satellite cells is that they protect and support the ganglionic neurons. Let us now see the myelin sheet. Myelin is an insulating sheet surrounding the axons of the myelinated nerve cells. It is produced by the oligodendrocytes in the CNS and by the Schwann cells in the PNS. Formation of the myelin sheet. Axon initially lies in a groove of the Schwann cell. The cell membrane of the Schwann cell is converted into three zones. Abexonal plasma membrane that is exposed to the external environment. Adexonal or periexonal plasma membrane that lies in contact with the axon. And Mesaxon, a double membrane fold that connects 
the add axonal and the add axonal dendrite. Sheet-like extension of mesaxon surrounds the axon spirally and cytoplasm of mesaxon gets squeezed. This results in formation of myelin sheet around the axon. Outside the myelin sheet, a thin layer of cytoplasm of Schwann cell is present along with surrounding cell membrane of the Schwann cell, now called as the neurilemmal sheet. This picture shows us the formation of the myelin sheet. This is a transverse section where we see the axon and the Schwann cell. And this is how the Schwann cell spreads out and spirals round the axon. The same is seen here as a longitudinal view where we see the longitudinal section of the axon and we see multiple Schwann cells which will then spread over and give rise to formation of the myelin sheet. And what we see here is also the gap between adjacent cells which is then called as the node of Ranvier. What are the functions of the myelin sheet? Protection and physical support to the axons. Insulation of axons. It increases the nerve conduction by saltatory conduction. Durinable sheet plays a major role in nerve regeneration. Thus, we have seen the general features of the histology of the nervous tissue. We saw the classification of the nervous system. We went on to see the structure of the neuron. We also saw the structure of all the neurogaryl cells. And we also saw the process of myelination. For further reference, you can read Yogesh Sontakke, Textbook of Human Histology, CBS Publishers and Distributors Private Limited, New Delhi, 2020, page numbers 122 to 135. Thank you.